Today we witness Big Boy looking back at the events that lead to a dramatic falling out between him and Rich Piana. Big Boy and the Strength Cartel are still making gains, both in terms of lifting heavyweight and in terms of their brand growing to new heights. But no one has targeted the Mexican-American community, getting a lot of support and we're representing our culture. A huge influence on Big Boy that helped inspire him to reach for such heights was Rich Piana, a man who inspired millions of people across the world and spearheaded YouTube fame in bodybuilding. Who is Big Boy? Sometimes big things actually do come in big packages. That holds true for the powerlifter, skateboarder, and viral video sensation Jake Johns, aka Big Boy, from San Clemente, California. Weighing in at above 330 pounds, he's got a strength athlete's body and a concrete surfer's soul. Big Boy's skateboarding antics are the stuff of legend. His drop-in on Tony Hawk's 13.5-foot vert ramp, although ending in a disastrous slam, gathered over 1 million YouTube views and counting. When he's not rubbing shoulders with skateboard superstars and shredding their private training facilities, Big Boy is equally at home in the world of strength training and mixed martial arts. You can catch him on social media working out with legendary UFC fighters, pumping iron alongside the world's strongest powerlifters, and sharing workout tips from the hottest gyms in SoCal. It's all part of the same program for Big Boy, and his followers are always hungry for more. Whatever Jake Johns decides to do next, you already know it's going to be big. In actuality, he is a heavyweight class athlete. He is the kind of guy that when walking in the street, most people would take notice of. Behind his muscular physique is a true athlete, who shows amazing talents for someone of his size. Growing up, he was good friends with Ryan Sheckler, who went on to become a world-famous professional skateboarder and was known just as a kid who skateboarded a lot around their junior high school. Big Boy was a notable strength athlete and bodybuilder who was recognized worldwide for his achievements. Big Boy formed Strength Cartel, known worldwide for their strength training programs, supplements, and brand. Big Boy has always been athletic and willing to promote his skills at just about any sport or activity to showcase the amazing abilities of bodybuilders to the world stage. A couple years back, when he wanted to prove that big men can skateboard and performed a heel flip at Venice Beach, it was then that Tony Hawk commented on it on his YouTube channel. When Sheckler saw Big Boy, he was inspired to get back into skating. He asked him if he had any suggestions on how he can get his enormous body back on the board. Big Boy decided it was time to try out a big ramp. After a few practice runs on Sheckler's ramp, then decided to promote the entire video on YouTube. Who has a big ramp? Tony Hawk. There is a 13.5 foot vert ramp, which isn't usually skated on by people who weigh 335 pounds. Beyond these challenges, Big Boy is growing the strength cartel empire, proving to the world that you can truly access a world-class strength and conditioning routine with one of the best gurus within the industry. I got into the industry thing because of uh, Rich Piana. He reached out to me when I my Instagram told him to hit me up or told me to hit him up. The feud. Although Big Boy has been known to take inspiration from Rich Piana, I came, hey Rich, uh, is it okay if I start doing my own clothing? And uh, yeah, he gave me his blessings. Like, yeah, go ahead, Big Boy. Um. Unfortunately, they ended up having a very public falling out due to Big Boy starting his own clothing line. It's not going to work out. I don't like the Chavio own brand. Instead, he texted me at 3 a.m. And I took that personal and as disrespect. So, Depending on which side you asked, it was seen as one betraying the other. Things got ugly fast, and it made headlines across the web. A lot has changed since then. Rich Piana sadly passed away in the summer of 2017, much to the shock of the bodybuilding community, and Big Boy continued to find success with Strength Cartel. In a sit-down interview, Vlad Yudin asked Big Boy to reflect back on the controversial falling out with Rich Piana, recollecting what exactly happened. Has the passing of Rich Piana and time changed the perception of the beef for Big Boy? In return, he didn't show me the same respect, you know. Um. What happened to Rich Piana? Dallas McCarver and Rich Piana, two of the most muscular men on the planet, passed away in recent years. McCarver, who placed second at this year's Arnold Classic Bodybuilding Show and at only 26, was likely the future face of the sport. He was said to have choked to his end on food, building mass to the very last. Autopsy results later told a very different story. Monster, with a modest competition history but a huge following among fans who admired his size and charisma, passed away at 46 of complications related to a recreational drug overdose. Police allegedly found a bag of white powder next to his bed, though his girlfriend denies this. The two joined a long list of high-profile bodybuilders, around 30 or so major competition winners and other prominent athletes over the past three decades, 
who have passed away prematurely due to drug overdoses, heart attacks and other organ failures, and cancer. A few, such as International Federation of Bodybuilding Pros, Mohamed Benaziza and Andreas Munzer, collapsed immediately after competitions. Premature passing is common enough in the profession that it's become a trope. Back in the early 2000s, the popular fitness website T Nation ran a death pool for star bodybuilders. Piana, who was accused by many critics of injecting oil into his muscles to inflame and thus inflate them as well as getting muscle implants, was a particularly extreme case. His immense build and glamorous Instagram lifestyle ensured that lines of Arnold Classic and Olympia attendees waiting to see him at his 5% nutrition booth were longer than anyone else's. Many of the sport's top personalities were destroying themselves to achieve seemingly impossible physiques, pushing their bodies past the breaking point, and people took note. Each new chemical advance made muscles larger and rounder, but, especially when combined with hard living or unlucky genetics, this also meant more weight on joints and more pressure on hearts. The top stars kept growing well into the early 2000s, with the advent of insulin growth factor and synthetic growth hormone pushing the average competition weight of a Mr. Olympia participant from 220 pounds in the late 70s to 250 pounds today. The biggest bodied stars were also the best, with 270-pound behemoths Dorian Yates, who has spoken about his growth hormone use, and Ronnie Coleman combined for 14 Mr. Olympia titles between 1992 and 2007. An arms race played out through fan gossip on bodybuilding forums, which bodybuilder was taking the most steroids? Who could endure the longest, most grueling workouts? Who had gone too far, and how much longer would he be among the living? From their passings, a familiar narrative has developed. Big men are dying young because they wanted to be larger than life. In Paul Solotaroff's 1990 Village Voice profile of former Mr. America Steve McCulloch, the ex-bodybuilder articulated this idea. McCulloch wanted to walk on stage at the Beacon Theater on November 15, 1986, Professional Bodybuilding's Night of Champions, and just turn the joint out with his 260 pounds of ripped, stripped, and shrink-wrapped muscle, Solotaroff writes. And then, God help him, he wanted to end his life, right there in front of everybody, with all the flash bulbs popping, he wanted to drop lifeless huge and hard at the age of 39, and leave a spectacular corpse behind. McCulloch didn't pass away on stage in 1986, however. Instead, he battled with liver tumors, kidney disease, and heart failure until taking his own life in 2012. He endured as the living embodiment of Solotaroff's epic cautionary tale, one of the first truly heavy-duty, intensity or insanity bodybuilders clinging to life. Death is no excuse, was one of McCulloch's catchphrases, but it did eventually offer a way out. That's all for this video, folks. See you another time.